Super. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to have in a few more as we uh, roll through, but I think we can probably just get uh, started just now. Hello, and welcome to the Mink Chat GPT-4 session. Uh, as many as you, as many of you will know, Mink is the startup house in Malmo, where you'll find a community of like-minded and passionate entrepreneurs that you can connect with, learn from, and grow alongside. Today in the session, you've got tech coach Ricard and myself, Mark, Mink's marketer in residence, and together we'll dive into ChatGPT along with you. So just a little bit of housekeeping. It's about 30 or 40 minute session today. I'm gonna keep it uh, moving along swiftly. We're recording it. And feel free to put your contact details, especially your LinkedIn details into the chat section. We really wanna build up a swell of interest in the subject after today's session. Listen at the end as well for some details on how you can join the next Mink Sprint completely focused on generative AI. Let's start with an introduction to ChatGPT4 to get everyone on the same page. A GPT or generative pre-trained transformer is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a sophisticated neural network used to train large language models. The network uses large amounts of publicly available internet text to stimulate human communication. And ChatGPT4 itself, developed by OpenAI, is the, la the latest iteration of the language model that can understand and generate human-like text. You'll probably know about OpenAI's other mega tool, DALI, the AI system that can generate realistic images and art from a description in neural uh, natural language. Today, we're going to mostly focus on use cases of ChatGPT4, but also speak about some of the companies that are utilizing the OpenAI API to bring generative AI into their own applications. ChatGPT4 has scripted stand-up routines in the style of the late and great comedian George Carlin about the very recent Silicon Valley bank failure. It's also explained quantum theory physics to a child as though it were rapper Snoop Dogg. But more relevantly, it also has the power to revolutionize industries by automating tasks, generating content, and enhancing user experiences, and frankly, so much more. Every day at Mink, we're seeing interesting ways that AI has been used through the chatbot interface that we know, the plugins, which have only just been announced, and the actual integration with GPT-4 API and the other open AI tools. Today, we're going to explore how startups can leverage this technology to grow, innovate, and develop new tools. Well, as Ferris Bueller said, it moved pretty fast. Back in 2019, OpenAI released GPT-2 in a closed trial with what seemed like a whopping 1.5 billion parameters. Back in uh, November 2022, which already seems like a long time ago, GPT-3.5 is released with 175 billion parameters and a significantly API for developers to build applications. And just a couple of weeks ago, GPT-4 is released with a huge 1 trillion parameters. And as you'll have noticed, globally, startups are taking note, not just by investigating how to use ChatGPT in their businesses, but also to build whole new businesses. Last week alone, more than 200 new AI tools were released. Just think about that for a minute. So that's the headlines about GPT-4, but let's dive into why 4 is so significant and so distinct from what's come before. Well, the first is that it's about 10 times more advanced than its uh, brother, GPT-3.5. This enhancement enables the model to better understand text, or context rather, and distinguish nuances, resulting in more accurate and coherent responses. And I want to outline a few specific areas. The first is that while GPT-5 is quite capable of generating human-like text, 4 has an even greater ability to understand and generate different dialects and respond to emotions expressed in that text. Number two. GPT-4 can answer complex questions by synthesizing information from multiple sources, whereas 3.5 can struggle a little bit to connect those dots. Number three, 
Well, GPT 3.5 could generate uh, creative content. Ford definitely goes a lot further in producing stories, poems, and essays with improved coherence and creativity. In four, in complex problem solving, GPT-4 demonstrates a really strong ability to solve complex mathematical and scientific problems well beyond the capabilities of its predecessor. That leads us into number five, programming power. And it's something that Ricardo will speak a lot about later on. GPT-4's programming capabilities, you'll have seen them on TikTok and all your favorite social media channels for their ability to generate code snippets and debug existing source code and it's way more efficient than 3.5, making it a valuable resource for software developers. Six, which is a really interesting area from my point of view, unlike 3.5, which focuses primarily on text, four can analyze and comment on images and graphics. And number seven, in a highly uh, relevant uh, topic, as again, Ricardo will cover in a minute, is the reduction of inappropriate or biased responses. This has got a huge uh, area of consideration or concern. And four, implement some mechanisms to minimize undesirable results and hopefully increase reliability and also ethical responsibility. But it's also worth noting that while both these models have advantages and disadvantages in comparison to each other, 3.5 or 3 can solve uh, problems or basic problems faster than 4 because of its smaller parameter set. So don't always think that 4 is the best in every situation. And last week, OpenAI announced two completely major developments. Chat, uh, which has been quite limited in the past to a data set no older than uh, 2021, can now search the internet, interestingly using Microsoft Bing. Well, at least someone's using that. And this is pretty big. ChatGPT4 can now understand real-time data, or it can if you're in the uh, uh, plugin window, uh, in a way that was extraordinarily limited before. And uh, this, I think you'll understand, is, is pretty significant. And connected with this, they've announced their first trial of a series of plugins. These are in very early stages, but as you can imagine, the power this adds to ChatGPT to be able to use uh, real-time data much, much more efficiently. In terms of practical uses, there are absolutely loads and loads of ways to streamline operations uh, with ChatGPT. It's just an example of the things that it can do. I mean, broadly, you can think about everything from basic tasks, such as drafting emails, generating reports, assisting in some ways of project management, content generation, such as blog, uh, writing blog articles and social media content, and it can even build parts of your website. A few examples that I've personally used or seen it used to good effect. Why not try feeding ChatGPT your entire website content and then getting it to discover uh, or suggest keywords for your Google search campaign? Then getting Chat to write the headlines and copy to test in your Google search campaign. And then getting Chat to use those keywords and descriptions to develop relevant blog posts and landing pages and even write code for those landing pages. All of these things I've seen it do myself to high effect. And something I saw recently, which I thought was cheeky and quite, uh, but quite useful, for those of you looking for jobs, why not feed chat the job description that you're considering applying for, then ask it to decide what the most likely questions you'll be asked at the interview. Don't just stop there. Why not feed it your CV and ask chat to come up with some specific answers to those questions from your very own CV. Just a couple of examples uh, from recent experience that show the speed that chat can bring to operational efficiencies, both personally and professionally. Going deeper into those that are building on the technology, though, some of the things we've noticed, such as the uh, startup like Replica, that's used ChatGPT to create an AI companion, which can assist users in scheduling and reminders and even emotional support, thus increasing productivity and reducing operational costs. Companies like Viable that utilize ChatGPT4 to analyze customer feedback and provide actionable insights, helping businesses improve some of their products and services. And then really straightforward scenarios like copy AI that leverage ChatGPT to generate marketing copy. 
how could you use these kind of uh, startups in your own business or even think about developing your own tools? In terms of customer experience, there's huge areas that we believe ChatGPT4 can help. Everything from dramatically enhancing customer interactions by making those terrible chatbots actually useful and not so awful as they used to be, enabling personalized content either in advance in FAQs or for live requests. What about sentiment analysis? Being able to understand what en masse customers are actually saying from within a whole uh, data set of words and drawing some action points from this. The world's your oyster in terms of uh, ways in which chat can help on a customer experience point of view. And I'd love to, after the session, hear of some of your own experiences in future chats. One little example of this is the uh, cookie chatbot, which utilizes the GPT technology to provide customer support, reducing response times and improving customer satisfaction. And with these new plugins that have been announced from ChatGPT, this really levels things up massively. What plugins could you create for your business that use this technology to create some operational efficiency, customer service, or a whole other paradigm? Yeah, so Ricard here. I'm a tech coach at Mink. So if you have any geeky questions, you can always throw them at me. I have a couple of slides here just talking about uh, more from the tech side from two different angles, to be honest. The first one being this. Uh, I don't know how many dev people we have here in the crowd or if you have your dev team, but like if one part of the whole AI movement, uh, especially open AI, is this you know assistance in code generation and software development support. And if you're anything familiar with development in the past or doing right now, everyone knows about the terminology IntelliSense, which like you know tells you when you code, it's gonna suggest you know this parameter and this parameter, it will guide you what you should fill in. But this next next generation with AI, right, uh, powered by Codex, is uh, basically IntelliSense on steroids. So not only will it like tell you what you can put in for parameters, it will actually su uh, suggest like whole code segments, for example, in real time based on behavior patterns, uh, your patterns you're doing, for example, it will help you automatically, you know, point out that this is a security risk. This is like, you know, deviating from OWASP, for example. Uh, it can do automated code reviews. Like, you know, this is not the best practice. Like you're gonna probably have a scalability issue here and so on and so forth. Uh, what it's not like, so people like, you know, as Mark already mentioned, you can basically ask the, the chat GPT to code for you and create a website. But by the end of the day, right, it will not, you still need to know how to code, but it will help you reduce errors and speed up your coding. And a really good example is GitHub Copilot. And this is interesting, right? Because, you know, Microsoft have a big stake in OpenAI uh, as a company and Microsoft acquired GitHub a couple of years ago. So GitHub was very early on at actually uh, harnessing AI. And they do that through the, what's called a codex. And, and development is pretty easy to create AI because it's like you know, very strict and, you know, it's, there's no disinformation, so to speak. And they did some research, and I think it's just interesting to see that, for example, Copilot helps developers to preserve the mental effort during repetitive tasks. Because, like coding, if you do it, there's a lot of repetitive tasks. So they're like mentally, you know, uh, sane still. And then they did two test groups in terms of like, you do this coding, you do this coding, split in half, like a thousand people here, a thousand people here. The thousand people using Copilot, they spend half of the time, you know, uh, uh, finishing a task. Uh, compared to the one who didn't have code pilots. So it definitely helps. And I think this is super interesting, uh, at least from my perspective and with my, my tech team, so to speak, in my company. Moving on to the next slide. Um, I think, you know, the most important is like, I talk to a lot of startups that thinks like, I have to create AI. No, you're not, but you need to leverage AI. And right now, open AI, like as a company and the AI industry is like leading. So that's why we're talking about that, right? But I think if you, you play the cards right with your product, you have a huge opportunity to create like a big, big differentiator for your product in your industry. And why I'm saying that is because, like Mark said, like, you know, all of a sudden you can basically throw data at ChatGPT and get like, you know, a proper response, like a human response, and you can ask back a question and so on and so forth. So imagine if you have a CRM with a lot of data with all your clients, and then all of a sudden you can put a chat layer on top of that. And instead of going through different views, you're asking the CRM, like, what's my quota this year, uh, month? Then you can probably even ask, who should I focus on to meet that quota? 
oh, these customers are harder than others and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden you actually have like a proper conversation with the CRM. And that's, I think is the most interesting piece. And that's why I'm highlighting chat plugins. And right now it's like a limited access. You can sign up for a wait list, especially for GPT-4, right? But if you want to leverage OpenAI with your product, plugins what is what you use to have your data model in AI. But like in my opinion, right, OpenAI's ambition broadly is like to replace Google. Like, you know, let's not do search anymore. Let's ask questions and talk. So if you like, and they're definitely positioned to join, to, to win that uh, that uh, race right now, if you compare it to the other ones. Uh, so the earlier you align, the better. Like you want to be like, remember back in the days when Google was new and it was super easy to be number one? That can be you now if you do the, you know, things right with OpenAI. And then next slide. Uh, so the future of ChatGPT and OpenAI. Sure. So, so AI, I think, is a real paradigm shift in the tech world. Um, but also remember, like this has been, you know, OpenAI is founded in 2015, so it's been around for eight years. So AI has been around and so on and so forth. The reason it's happening right now and everyone's reacting to it is because everyone is mind blown that the fact that you can talk to a bot and you can get the snarky response if you ask for it, you can get a witty response if you want it, you can get like a boring corporate response if you want that, and you get like, this is crazy. And you can ask it, is this Python script correct? And they say yes or no. And you're like, whoa. But they spent eight years to get to that point, right? Uh, but now it's obviously mature enough to do this. So uh, it is definitely, I think, a te technology leap like at the same magnitude of not superior than the actual internet back in the days. And then if you click again, Mark, uh, at the same time, right, there's a lot of shit chat around now, like an Elon Musk and other tycoons are saying like, stop, stop, this is going the wrong direction. And, you know, we're going to be like Terminator and we're going to be taken over by bots. Uh, maybe. And then I think it was a funny, I don't know if you follow this guy on somehow, but he has a really good uh, newsletter called CB Insights, uh, which you should subscribe to. Uh, and then obviously Sam was of, of OpenISA. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's absolutely things that's going to happen right now. And the, I think the biggest threat or problem we're going to see in front of us right now is disinformation. Because you can literally automate a magazine online with made up avatars creating articles, biased articles about news coming out and people would eat it up and that's it we just have to agree in this room like we want to do good but people can do bad but it's the same thing you can google bad things like build a bomb or whatnot and you can google good things so it was the same kind of up like you know people being upset in the beginning like where you can actually find through things through google and thinking google is actually telling you it it's just they just find the results for you but i mean ai is here to stay it's going to be a pretty bumpy road and a couple couple of next years before it's kind of settles and actually how it's going to be utilized. Uh, but I will say like, don't go into the rabbit hole in terms of just chatting with chat GPT. Look at from your angle and your startup and how you can leverage your data with their modeling and create a unique experience. That's what, what I would focus on. Like AI is not going to go anywhere anytime soon and open AI right now is the best. And that's my slides. Thank you so much for coming. I think this quote is worth uh, considering. This was from a recent uh, chat at South by Southwest. And uh, I feel like I could uh, lean in as well and, and say the same. Um, having spent the last uh, few months uh, deeply focused on this alongside uh, my colleagues, we are constantly impressed and interested and sometimes terrified by the direction that this is going in. But let's talk a little bit about why you should consider getting involved now or should you wait? I think the consideration that we think about is often around like the right time to jump into anything, exactly as Rika was talking about. And of course, there's two angles to this. One is just using the likes of ChatGPT4 from a you know quick wins operational point of view. There is no reason to hold off. But from a point of view, uh, let's say a business point of view, while ChatGPT4 offers immense potential, it's kind of important we feel to consider the potential risks and also the ethical concerns. So data privacy, potential biases, and the potential for misuse are critical factors to weigh up for companies when deciding if they should adopt any new technology, but especially AI. Do you wait or do you go forward now 
And also another consideration, is which AI technology do you bet on? This is also a big risk. We're really talking about open AI stable here, but of course they're not the only ones in the game. I think this quote also sums up a little bit of the mindset that we're in too. Which direction the technology goes in ultimately depends in large part on the responsibility with which companies develop it. This is where you come in. We feel probably that the greatest risk is to wait and to hold off. And we would suggest that you investigate now how to exploit the benefits. And could you and your startups or future businesses be one of those to responsibly develop it into the future? Three key takeaway points from our quick look at ChatGPT today. The first is that you can use ChatGPT4 right now to massively op uh, optimize customer interactions, streamline operations, and boost productivity. Of course, uh, it requires either uh, waiting for uh, official access or paying the fee. But frankly, $20 a month is small potatoes, I think, with the difference that ChatGPT4 offers over 3.5. And I'd recommend everyone on this call to do it straight afterwards. The second point is that although this is still very new, not numerous startups and businesses are already leveraging ChatGPT4 and the wider OpenAI ecosystem to achieve some pretty radical developments. And we recommend uh, founders and entrepreneurially minded people to consider how this affects their business, how they challenge them, and what the opportunities are. And the last point we feel, or I should say ChatGPT feels, since it wrote this bullet point, that it's time for founders to embrace the AI revolution and explore the endless possibilities with ChatGPT4 and OpenAI. Thanks, Chat. I really appreciated your help with that last bullet point. So thanks for your time today in this whirlwind uh, tour of ChatGPT4. There's nothing more uh, useful, I think, than just being able to open uh, the tool itself and start having a play around, see what kind of prompts you can put in. I saw something that talked about, in future, we're going to be poets or writers because of the way in which we'll have to put prompts together. In fact, I even saw a job for a ChatGPT4 prompter the other day, which suggests where we're at. And that's something to consider as well. A lot of this still does require human beings. But hopefully you can see why we're so passionate about this technology and the landscape of generative AI and how it's developing. I believe that there is space for all of us humans still. Uh, there's the great programmer joke that surfaced recently that in order for ChatGPT to replace programmers, clients would have to become much better at describing what they actually want. Joking aside though, I know personally that ChatGPT has already radically changed my own processes and work, and I'm seeing this uh, with the startup that I coach as well. We're starting to bring it into meetings and use it as a third person to uh, achieve a lot of the heavy lifting that we'd have probably had to have taken some weeks or months to do in the past. I also hope that you've spotted ways for this technology to revolutionize your business operations and create new opportunities for your startups and as I say, even in this whirlwind quick um, session today, it's hopefully lit the touch paper for some deeper questions that you can have further than this call. And that's what we're looking for with this chat today. Please reach out to us via the website mink.se or scan the QR code for access to the link to our next AI-focused sprint. We're all about making Mink the heart of the conversation around generative AI. And we'd love you to follow us on social channels, connect with us after this, and come in, if you're not already in Mink, to discuss this or really anything involved in the startup landscape. We're there for you. I hope that uh, I can see you around Mink uh, soon. Thanks again for your time today in this quick session, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>